I'm delighted to have all of you here to share in this unique opportunity to exchange views and experiences and to put forth a national municipal agenda that reflects the perspectives of America's city's leaders. The motivation for us to join together is clear. Our world, our nation, and indeed our cities are changing. City leaders nationwide are facing sweeping demographic, environmental, and technological forces that are reshaping our communities. We can't stand idle as our roads and bridges deteriorate, as natural disasters become more consequential, as our failed immigration system tears apart families and holds back economic growth. Cities are taking actions to adapt to a changing world. Across the country, city leaders are driving not just our local and regional economies, but progress in our country overall. In Salt Lake City, we're transforming mobility, strengthening neighborhoods, creating a welcoming, secure place, and expanding access to our amazing natural world for adults and kids. It is our shared perspective, our street-level view of conditions that promote innovation, economic growth, and job creation. And our influence only grows when we stand together. So as we lead locally, we also recognize we cannot fail to participate in national decisions that affect our communities. When I became president of the National League of Cities last November, I said this year will be the year of connecting. NLC has already taken significant steps to connect with leading organizations on important issues to cities. For example, we encourage and support city efforts that expand children's access to the outdoors through the NLC's partnership with the Children and Nature Network. And we provide insights, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and analysis needed for excellence in land use decision making through a new partnership with the Rose Center at the Urban Land Institute. Connecting also means calling on our federal partners to listen before they act and establishing a strong line of communication from City Hall to Capitol Hill. Look no further than the current state of our transportation infrastructure to realize cities need a greater role in planning and project selection. Cities hold the key to our national economic vitality. It is cities that keep people and goods moving, requiring a safe, seamless, and modern infrastructure system. Last year, Congress extended the current transportation law through May 2015. Short-term extensions are not enough. This year, join NLC in urging Congress to pass a long-term federal surface transportation bill. Cities need the stability from long-term transportation legislation to plan and invest in infrastructure for the future. At the local level, we act to meet the needs of our community. Congress needs to act to meet the needs of our nation. That's why we call on Congress to pass the e-fairness legislation and close the online sales tax loophole. It's long overdue. This will allow cities the flexibility to collect sales taxes already owed on remote online purchases. In Salt Lake City, for example, we estimate this would mean more than a million dollars annual in new, in new revenue. These are resources for basic services, such as roads and police officers, without costing the federal government a penny. In cities, we act, and we need Congress to act. We must also protect the existing tax-exempt status of municipal bonds. One of the primary tools for cities to finance needed investments in our nation nation's public infrastructure. 
As we discuss how we connect with each other and our federal partners, let us not forget, in the face of new challenges, the persistent ones that have spanned generations. In just the last years, last year, we witnessed events in cities across our country that call upon each of us as Americans to examine more critically issues of race and equity. Unfortunately, the recent events in Ferguson, Missouri, New York City, and elsewhere are not the first time this country's conscience has been challenged by issues of race and justice. But they have elevated and provoked a renewed conversation for our national and community leaders and so many of our citizens. Fifty years ago, on March 7, 1965, Reverend Jose Williams and John Lewis stepped from their pulpit and led a group of 600 in a march for voting rights in Selma, Alabama. Yes, the anniversary. After just a few blocks, when they crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge, state troopers and county sheriff's deputies attacked the group with nightsticks and tear gas. The violence stopped the marchers' first attempt, but they would not be silenced. Tragically, today, 50 years later, the issues of race in our communities persist. Too many in our nation endure persistent barriers to economic and social equity, and to full participation in the American dream. As America's leaders, we must answer today's call and reject racial bias, increase equity, and increase and create justice in our communities once and for all. I'm very proud to say that here at NLC, we are answering that call. Today, I am pleased to announce that the National League of Cities is launching a new initiative that focuses on race, equity, and leadership, or the real initiative, as you'll hear us refer to it. The REAL initiative will align NLC's unique strengths and resources to support cities and, uh, excuse me, to support cities in creating communities where racial and ethnic diversity are seen as social and economic strengths. Promoting city leadership in all areas, especially those that are most challenging, has been a cornerstone principle of the National League of Cities. From education to sustainability, from community police relations to economic development. NLC positions America's local leaders to address our nation's most urgent issues. For more than 90 years, the National League of Cities has been the voice for all American cities, large, small, urban, and rural. Our presence here is an acknowledgement that our shared interests are greater than our differences. Our strategic plan is guiding NLC's efforts to ensure that cities are equipped to take on 21st century challenges. We've made changes to our organizational structure that will make us more nimble and a more responsive advocate for the needs of cities. We are also taking proactive steps to connect with those groups that share our interests, building an even stronger coalition for our local communities. In 2016, the National League of Cities will be moving from its current building, seeking to relocate with the National Association of Counties. We look to enhance our existing partnership with the U.S. Conference of Mayors and other local government organizations. Local governments will have a headquarters in Washington, demonstrating the power and influence of local leaders in the nation's capital. President Obama's attendance today is a powerful acknowledgement of the critical role each of you plays in the future of this nation. The President looks to city leaders for insights and leadership, 
From fighting obesity to eliminating veterans' homelessness to improving educational opportunities for our children and youth. We are seen as crucial to a brighter, more prosperous future. Soon we will again have another opportunity to choose the leader of our nation, who will be tasked with governing an increasing urban landscape in a country whose economy is driven by cities. It is imper imperative that our issues as local elected officials are at the forefront of the 2016 presidential election. Tomorrow, we will hold the first meeting of the National League of Cities 2016 Presidential Election Task Force. The task force will raise the visibility of city issues in the presidential campaign and provide tools and resources for NLC members to engage with candidates on city issues. Our interests will not be realized without the presence of unwavering, innovative municipal leaders joining together to push for the needs of cities. This is the year of connecting. We are pushing forward an agenda that makes our communities better. As the leaders closest to our communities, let's raise our voices and stand strong together. If we do that, I know we will succeed. Thank you.